This comedy show is all about my experiences of Hungary, Hungarian culture and language, and is best enjoyed by those who know something about Maja. Enjoy! Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Budapest. It's really nice to be here. Najon Kusunum. And that's where all of my Hungarian ends. Thank you so much. Uh, I know that uh, I'm looking a little bit traumatized. It's because I flew into Budapest Airport this morning, and of course that means that I flew with Ryanair. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know, Ryanair is this new technology where they basically manage to make an aeroplane out of misery. <laughs> Fantastic. So I have just arrived and I had to have like three showers, you know, the Ryanair shower that you get to the hotel and then you do the shower and then you get out and you go, I need to go back in there. This is not over. But it's really nice to be back in uh, your wonderful city. I uh, haven't been here for a while and you have a new app for using the public transport. You should see your Hungarian faces right now. <laughs> I hate that app. <laughs> I personally love this app, okay, because every time I've been to Budapest before this, you have to buy, you know, the tiny little butterfly wing tickets to get on the fucking bus. The ones that are so, it's like a toothpick. That's what you, it's so small you can't even see it. You have to use tweezers to try and find it. And then you have to go to one of these machines and you have to have the exact right coins to buy the tickets in the machines and everything is 150 billion Hufflepuffles. <laughs> everything. You need exactly 2,767,000 triffle diffles in here, and you, if you don't have the right... Oh, I missed the bus. Fuck, okay. <laughs> and you have bike paths now. <laughs> I fucking hate buses. <laughs> I'm excited for your bike paths because I was walking down the Danube and you have these actual proper bike lanes, which is really, really nice. Nobody's using those, by the way. Have you noticed? They're on the, they're on the pavement. That's fun. They're just cycling along the pavement. But you do have these new bike lanes, which is really cool, you know, actually having cycling infrastructure. But then they sort of give up on that at some point in the middle of the city. Have you noticed? This sort of kind of disappears. And then there's a new plan for the cycling routes. They take a little ruler and they measure one and a half centimeter. <laughs> on the road, and then they draw a line with a white paint, like that. And you're like, there, you can just about fit the wheel of the bicycle in there. <laughs> oh, that's safe, isn't it? Yes. I love that, by the way, that suicide is illegal in this country. <laughs> but you can go and rent a bike right now, why do you? <laughs> I love that suicide is illegal, by the way. What law is that? What is the plan there? Oh my God, is that guy dead? Fuck that, put handcuffs on him. There we go. <laughs> it's really nice to, uh, to be here. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, I actually am from the UK. I live in Denmark. My wife is Hungarian. Yeah, it's weird. We just don't want to be in European Union or something. Something is going on. Uh, but uh, so we come backwards and forwards and we get to go and visit and I wanted to tell you this evening about how I met my wife and the kind of like the exciting journey that we went on and how a ginger man got laid. That was the plan <laughs> for the, you know. Don't worry, there's no ginger people in here. They're playing World of Warcraft or the new Zelda or whatever shit is out there right now. We, we met in Denmark, but then I went to come and uh, visit her uh, here in Hungary, and we actually went to Balaton, which was a lot of fun. We went to visit a few different places. We went to Tahin, Tihi. I don't know, I, I don't try to learn it, I just call it Tahini. So we went there, it was nice. <laughs> and then we went to visit there, that was really nice. And then we went down to a place called Sheofok. <laughs> I love this place so much. This is basically if Hell Energy Drink <laughs> had an alcohol problem. That's what's going on there. The worst customer service, I know that, uh, that, uh, that Hungary is very bad for customer service in, uh, in general, but the customer service in Schierfog is next level low. Oh my God. Have you ordered an ice cream at one of the things at Schierfog? The face of the person. <laughs> oh, ice cream, really? <laughs> now, on a hot sunny day? <laughs> What I love is that she takes the scoop, she scoops the ice cream, it falls into the cone, right? Down into the cone. There's no ice cream above the cone. Do you get what I mean? It's inside. 
2,000 for it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know why my wife found me attractive uh, at that time, because, you know, it was 27 degrees, I was sweating, I looked like a spanked lobster. It was crazy. <laughs> it was disgusting. But while we were there, we were getting to know each other a little bit, and she starts teaching me a little bit of Hungarian, and her Hungarian is really good, by the way. I don't know, have you met Hungarian people? Holy fuck, they are good at Hungarian. Gee, give yourselves a, like, a pat on the back every evening, because you have managed to learn that fucking language. That is, that is incredible. What I love is that there's no, you can't just learn a word. Every word has 11 different things that you can add to the, there's things dripping off of every word. I just asked that we were eating in a restaurant and they had turkey on the, the menu, the food, not the dictatorship. And we were eating and, um, <laughs> and I just said to her, hey, how do we say this? And she said, oh, it depends whose turkey you're talking about. <laughs> what? So apparently there's a poika, right? That's a standard, you're not from Hungary. No, you do speak Hungarian, okay, great. So there's a poika, which is general turkey. There's a poikad, which is your turkey? <laughs> no? Oh, it is? Okay, shit, I'm guessing and I'm getting it right. Actually, all the Hungarian people, don't, they don't even know. They're like, yeah, if I can. <laughs> then there's a poikam. Is that right? That's our turkey? <laughs> My turkey? Okay, well, we need to get specific. Who's fucking poika? <laughs> there's a poika, there's a poikad, there's a poikam. What is this, Pokemon? <laughs> what, you add a moonstone and it becomes a poikameleon? <laughs> My personal favorite is a poi kank. That's our turkey, right? Yeah. Because that really sounds like a holiday destination in Thailand. <laughs> that wealthy British people go to. Oh, we had a lovely holiday in poi kank this year. Wonderful. <laughs> I just love Hungarian so much because it's just absolutely like nothing in the surrounding area. I love it, there are so many Slavic languages here in Central Europe, and then there's just Hungary sitting in the middle. Like, they're all like, we cannot talk to each other. Nem kusunum. <laughs> so many letters, there's 44 letters. 44 letters, no grammar, it's chaos. It's just <laughs> civil war in a language. There's so many letters that you're making up. What? There's two words for the, for the uh, color red. Two words. I love the Hungarian people. I don't like red. <laughs> there's two words for the number two, which I think is quite fun. There's one word for the number one. There's two for number two. There's ket and ketu. I like the idea that there should be three, letter, three words for, the, for number three. Four for number four. Just keep going. <laughs> My, uh, my wife has a wonderful friend uh, who she calls Kish Lutze, which I think is really fun because you can, you can have these names, right? You can be like Kish Lutze and Naj Janosch. It's like you're constantly in the mafia. <laughs> who are we meeting at the train station? Little Lutze. <laughs> <laughs> she hangs out with Big John. <laughs> But uh, Kirš Lutze was teaching me uh, a little bit of Hungarian. And there's so many funny things. Uh, like, I love the word for tree in Hungarian because it sounds like that feeling when you think you've left the oven on at home. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> she told me that wooden spoon is fuckanal. <laughs> it's very aggressive. <laughs> Butt sex in the kitchen, I mean, it's 2023, I think it's okay. I like the word for cheese because it sounds like a, a Scottish man who's very unhappy with the English government. Shite. <laughs> Sometimes it gets uh, a little bit Japanese as well. You know, my children are also, they're trilingual, so we also sometimes sort of speak Hungarian together and I just stand in the corner. <laughs> But we were playing hide and seek, and that gets very Japanese. You know how they play hide and seek in Hungary, right? The person closes their eyes and they say, Eki boy, Eki nim, jim jim. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an anime. <laughs> uh, the Hungarians are always saying, yo, yo, pussy, pussy. <laughs> Straight out of 8th district. <laughs> 
I also like the word for vacuum cleaner in Hungarian, porcivo. Because it sounds very much like a butler from the Queen, doesn't it? Oh, do get me another glass of sherry, porcivo. <laughs> But we went to Balaton, we had a really good time together, and then we decided uh, to come back here to Budapest to, uh, to get to know each other a little bit better. And I know that uh, people say that Hungarians are very pessimistic, but there is one thing that Hungarians are very optimistic about. Parking in Budapest. <laughs> it's next level. Because if you drive around with a Hungarian, they will find a parking space, no matter what, in any... And they will convince you and themselves that it's fine. Like, what are you talking about? There's loads of space between this tree and this bit of fence. What are you... Just reverse the car in there. But Janos, it's in the road. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We had a four-meter-long Suzuki. We parked it in a three-meter, 98-centimeter gap. I like the people that don't give a fuck, by the way, because there are a class of Hungarians that literally just park their car on the fucking pavement. Have you seen those people? They're not looking for parking, they just fucking drive up, they just drop their car and they just walk off. And it's always like a big black SUV, you know what I mean? And on the back is like a Trianon bumper sticker, you know, with the real Hungary, the one that we all secretly know exists, you know, the big, the Nudge Maja Orseg on the back. The guy's name's like Tom Ash or something, his sunglasses. I think it's so funny that on car number plates, by the way, that, uh, you know, uh, in uh, Europe, that there is a letter to say which country it is from. And that letter is the name of the country in that language. So, for example, Spain is E because it's Hispania. It's the same for every country in Europe except Hungary. That's true. That's the same for everybody except Hungary because they're like, oh, we are Mojarasek. And everyone's like, we can't fucking say that. That's really... <laughs> Well, we got to know each other a bit better. We spent some, uh, some time in this wonderful city and uh, there's lots of places to go out and eat, loads of places to go out and drink, which is really good fun. It's always really difficult now in my 30s to ring friends when I'm back here to ask them if they want to go out because I'm getting older and they will start to say things like, we can meet up, but I'm now alcohol free. <laughs> oh, I just lost another friend. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> but we'll do, try to do fun things like we'll go out to the ruin bars where you get fucking ruined. You get ruined at the ruined bars. Although I have noticed something at the ruined bars, and there is a, a good way that the Hungarians get rid of shitty flavored beer in this country. They call it craft beer. <laughs> it's true. It's true. If you go into a place and you order a good standard Hungarian beer, like Borsodi, you know? Oh, the sweet, delicious taste of Borsodi under that Balaton sun. Oh. If you order that and it arrives and it tasted like somebody put a cigarette out in it, you would be like, this is disgusting. Give me my money back. However, if they say, hang on, it's a craft beer, you're like, oh yeah, kind of ashy. Yeah, I like it, yeah. <laughs> Did a little bit of uh, sightseeing in uh, the city last time I was here. That's really fun. You get to do uh, a, you know, a tour with a really genuine local Australian backpacker. That's great. <laughs> Who's been here for two weeks and is leaving tomorrow. That's great. <laughs> They show you all kinds of things in the city. I feel like they're on a mission to piss off Hungarians, these Australian backpackers. They're none of them in here. You had to pay for tickets. They're outside. <laughs> because they just say all the things that annoy all the Hungarians, right? They'll say the classic things like, oh, good day, mate. Did you know it's not uh, Budapest, it's Buda and Pest. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> I don't I never ask my wife these kind of questions. I try to show her more love and caring as my Hungarian wife. You know the biggest, most loveliest thing that I do for her? I give her the middle of the Kokos <laughs> I know. I know. That is true fucking love. Have you given her the middle of the Kokos That's when you know it's true love, okay? Things like that are invented in order to show true love. Like giving them the last tour, Rudy. You know that feeling? You know when you look in the fridge and there is only one left and you hand it over to your beautiful wife? That's such a good feeling. I actually think that the reason that the, the number of Tour Rudies is uneven in every packet... <laughs> it's to prevent divorce in this country. It's true. It's true. There's always that feeling, you scratch the fucking car parking at Fisherman's Bastion again. Here's the last Tour Rudy. It's okay. I get to visit my uh, wife's family a lot, which is really good fun. I've realized something about this country. You have the cities, and that's, you know, very densely populated, and it's full of all the young people. And then on the outside of these cities, you have all like, these kind of fake cities. 
<laughs> these little mini fake copy cities that are filled with all of the grandmothers. <laughs> and the further out you get, the older the people get. <laughs> like right on the edge, it's just Daddy Mama standing by the phone. <laughs> waiting and they always have like a fake name like here in Budapest on the outskirts you have other versions of Buddha there's like Buddha Kales and Buddha Kalash and Buddha Kalashnikov there's all of these <laughs> my best family is from Ege and there's like Ege there's Ege Bukta I feel like it's getting very specific right now I don't like geography <laughs> There's Ege Zalog, there's Ege Zelek, there's Ege Shegedre, there's all these little towns <laughs> on the outside. So we go to visit her family in Ege Shegedre and we're hanging out. And uh, they, had, they had cooked uh, fatsan, which is pheasant, but it was mistranslated to me as falcon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they put this big roasted bird on the table and they're like, it's falcon. I was like, okay. <laughs> These people are legendary. This is awesome. <laughs> and Daddy Papa even says, I broke its neck with my own hands. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> but Daddy Mama and Daddy Papa, they're the most badass people ever. Old Hungarian grandparents, they are the original hipsters. They are, they are the original hipsters. It's so true. Like they're not on social media. They don't use the fucking internet at all for anything. They eat locally sourced vegetables from their own garden. They brew their own palinka in their house. They're constantly like slightly drunk. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, like that cool day drinking level. <laughs> you smell like wine, yeah. They're so wonderful, they're so lovely. I feel like uh, Daddy Papa should get like a sleeve tattoo and a fedora to really finish it off. They're so nice, they're so sweet, but they're, to me, sometimes they're a bit too sacrificing. I don't know if you've met Hungarian grandparents, but you say anything and they'll give you everything. Do you know what I mean? You're like, oh, I'm a little bit cold. Here, have my coat off my back. Here, put this on. Put on my shoes, I don't need them. Sleep in my bed. Eat my dinner. Where are you? I will sleep next to the dog in the garden, okay? Just... <laughs> they're so sweet, but I do often feel like I'm in a musical because Hungarian people have a song for fucking everything. Everything has a song. Every word, object in this country has a song about it. Like, you can't do anything. We were walking in their garden and they have a little pond and there was a frog. And I was like, oh, there's a frog. And she was like, baker, breaker, breaker, da 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 Like, Daddy Papa knows the dance as well. <laughs> You're eating dinner, there's uh, chickpeas. Like, oh, is this chickpeas? Chishteribosha <laughs> hasblala. Look out the window, there's a squirrel running in a branch. Mokushka, <laughs> mokushka. My favorite part was after we ate the falcon. <laughs> they bring out the dessert and they have made a cake. And I love Hungarian grandparents so much because they ask you if you want cake like there's an option. <laughs> they ask you like there's a choice. There is no choice. It's like a Hungarian election, okay? <laughs> Whatever you choose, you're getting cake. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually there for New Year uh, last year, which was really good fun. And I love that uh, Hungarians have so many letters and the words are so crazy long that they've even given up saying their own words. Like, for example, to say uh, Happy New Year, you say... Oi... Oh, there we go. It was very nice. Boldog oi evek. Okay, I like some Hungarian people have given up on me. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> it's something like Bulldog Oi Evek, but they can't even say this, so they just say Buek. <laughs> Straight over eight districts. Buek! So we're just walking around shouting Buek at each other. My wife was even telling me that on birthdays you say Bulldog Sulinapod, right? But that's also too long to type, right? Because Hungarian, they're busy people, okay? So they just write B S Z. The Facebook post game for when it's people's birthdays, it must be on point in Hungary. Can you imagine? BS said, BS said, BS said, enter, enter, enter. If you really love the person, then you put a balloon emoji. <laughs> so we're sitting there, we'd finished our falcon, we're definitely eating cake, and 
And then they said, oh, we're going to celebrate the rest of uh, New Year in Napoli. And I was so excited. I was like, oh, my God, you've booked us a holiday to Italy. That is so nice. No, no, no. That means living room in Hungarian, OK? <laughs> that is the biggest anti-climax. Napoli ban. Oh, it's your fucking living room. All right. <laughs> We moved to Denmark, we lived together, fall in love, we decided to have a baby, and the pregnancy in Hungarian is actually uh, the same word as a burden, is that right? That's what you guys call it. How is your burden going? <laughs> but it's really sweet having uh, two children with their, of, uh, of course, uh, trilingual, which makes me suffer because I have to try and sing them uh, Hungarian children's songs. And what I wanted to try to do was sing some Hungarian children's songs for you. <laughs> if you would like that. Hopefully it will put all the Hungarian people to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what I would really like, I know this is not easy, but if you know the song, please sing along. Is everybody ready? <laughs> the Hungarian faces, I don't like singing. <laughs> I hate singing more than bicycles. <laughs> okay, this this one everybody should know. Chiga bigger jera ki, ega hazadi da ki, cups stay at fire, all na pra ishmada. It sounds nice, right? Internationals in the room are like, oh, what a nice song. It's so good, the translation. <laughs> this is negotiation skills 101 for Hungarian children. <laughs> Snaily, snaily. <laughs> Come out, your house is on fire. <laughs> you will get milk and butter. There will be leftovers for tomorrow. <laughs> That's how you calm down a snail who is on fire. <laughs> Oh my God, you're burning, you'll have milk and butter tomorrow. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay, let's try and sing this one together. <laughs> I feel like I might need your help for this one. Are you ready? Very good. That was really, really good. That was really good. I love this one because it sounds like you're around a campfire on a dark night. You sprinkle some things in, Victor Orban's face appears, it's perfect. <laughs> This is, uh, this is one of my absolute favorites and an absolute classic. Everybody should be singing along here. Bodsi, Bodsi, Tarka, Sesha, Flesha, Farka, Oda, Men, Yung, Agni, Ahoyte, Agni, Bodsi, Bodsi, Neg, Fazot, Bottom, Negi, Nadragot, Nemakata, Belveni, Agba, Kelet, Feteni. Very good. That's very good. I feel like we lost 80% of the people along the way, but. <laughs> The final 20%, like, we fucking love Botsy Botsy, all right? He is... <laughs> I love this one so very much because I have a feeling that this was an interview with a man who had drunk a lot of palinka, <laughs> who they found on the Danube. Botsy Botsy cow pattern <laughs> doesn't have an ear or a tail. We will go and live in a place where anyone can buy milk. That's how you deal with a cow that's been mutilated. Oh my God, somebody has cut you with a knife. Don't worry. We'll move to a location where you can buy milk. The only liquid you can create. It gets better. Don't worry, Botsy's situation gets better. Botsy, Botsy got a cold. Probably because he hasn't been helped after his injuries. <laughs> I made some trousers for him. <laughs> he didn't want to wear them. <laughs> we had to put him to bed. 
I just love that so much. This injured cow has now, <laughs> has now got a flu and you're saluting. We need to make some trousers for him, all right? <laughs> Janos, are those mushrooms kicking in for you right now? I'm telling you, trousers for the cow. Ah, <laughs> oh, he doesn't want to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need, uh, I need my Hungarian friend here for this one. Oh, it's better. Katalin Kasajel. I don't want to sing. Katalin Kasajel. <laughs> I don't like singing. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can sing together. You can't read it, oh no. Are you from Hungary? Oh no. Oh, okay, I'm very sorry. We're going to take that away from you. You're too, too angry for the song. Trying to get Hungarians to do anything. We're down to six people here. Okay. Katalin Kasajel jönnek a törökök, sóskutba tesznek, onnan is kivesznek, kerék alá tesznek, onnan is kivesznek. Iha jönnek a törökök, mindjárt a jönvernek. That was actually fucking beautiful. That was, that was really beautiful. What I love about this song is that... <laughs> if you're not trying to give milk and butter to snails or make trousers for cows, the song has to be about hating the Turkish, okay? <laughs> That's it, those are the rules for the Hungarian songs. And I love this one so much because my wife is from Ege and of course they have a big history. You know, they love the castle. They love, uh, you know, talking about the Turkish attack and it's really good for their wine marketing, by the way. It's really, it's really sad event unless they need to sell Bull's Blood or the Star of Ege and then it's fine. But I love this one so much. The translation is so good. Kata Linka, fly away. The Turks are coming. They want to put you in a salt well. They take you from there. When the Turks come, they will beat you to death. <laughs> oh, how charming. That's really nice. But my absolute favorite and the, the last uh, song that I want to leave you with is one of my favorites. My, you've got to imagine, you know, I don't understand what these songs mean at all. So my wife will be in the bedroom with our little baby girl and she'll be singing away and it will sound so beautiful, like your voice, so lovely and soft and soothing. And I'll be, oh my God, that's so wonderful. And then she'll start translating it for me. And what I'll hear her say is, and please sing along if you know it. Oh, it sounds so lovely, doesn't it? The city's on fire. The house is also on fire. Not one house, but a hundred. <laughs> fire, fire. Alas, the canal is far away. <laughs> you eat a cat. <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> Was it just one house burning? No, it was all the houses, actually. It was all of them. No survivors, honey. <laughs> Why didn't they put out the fire? Oh, the canal was very far away. It's just... <laughs> there is one last thing I want to leave you wonderful people with this evening, and that is to know that uh, when you're not flying in with uh, the Ryanair, that uh, you can unfortunately also come with something even worse. It's called Whiz Air. <laughs> it's like Ryanair's alcoholic father. <laughs> it's Ryanair without human rights, basically, is what it is. My favorite part of being on any Whiz Air is that moment when you're landing and they say, thank you for flying with Whiz Air. And you can't think that the feeling is not mutual. There is no, no one on this plane has that feeling in their body. 
And of course, you do save a lot of money flying with the Wizz Air, but you actually lose a lot of money in the wrong, long run because you have to pay for therapy. <laughs> it's true. The trauma, right? The trauma that you go through. But um, I was on the, the, the Wizz Air the last time I was, I was here, and there's a strange moment whenever you're on a plane. It's not just Wizz Air, Ryanair, but they make the safety announcement where they talk about what will happen in the event of a water landing. I love that term so much, water landing. <laughs> Sounds a lot like crashing in the ocean, doesn't it? You know that? <laughs> oh, if I can I choose my type of landing? Is that an option on the app before we take off? Because I'd like to land on a fucking runway if possible. <laughs> They talk about in a water landing, and they assume that everybody will be calm on the Wizz Air, you know, because it's the nicest people in society who are on the Wizz Air. <laughs> that the plane will gently land in the ocean. And then, of, uh, of course, you have to put on your life vest, do not inflate it, and then you have to casually go towards the exit, you know, in an orderly fashion. <laughs> Go towards the exit, and then there will be a nice slide, you must take off your heels, and then you go down the slide. And that's when the safety announcement ends. That's when the story ends. <laughs> that should be when the fucking story begins. <laughs> That's when they turn off the things and the plane starts taking off. What are you talking about? Now what happens next? What goes on? Uh, well, then we just wait in the ocean. Yeah. We're just floating around in the ocean. I can't ha help but have the feeling though that uh, if Wizz Air was ever to have a crash, that they would monetize the shit out of that. Can you imagine, like the plane hits the ocean, there's smoke everywhere, you're crawling along the floor, you're trying to find your exit, you see a staff member, please tell me where the nearest exit is. They're like, do you want to buy a scratch card? And then you get <laughs> crawling through, you think you found the slide, you're at the top, and there's a really long queue, there's so many injured people, and then somebody turns to you and like, hey, for 25 euros, you can take the express slide over here. <laughs> you guys have been so much fun to perform for. Thank you for having me in your beautiful city. You guys have been wonderful. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much.